All right. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending upon where you're located. We might even have a couple of folks where it's now early evening across the pond. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar, Using Online Tools to Uplevel Your Live Fundraising Event. My name is Heather Mansfield. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Nonprofit Tech for Good. We're very lucky to have Mobile Cause join us today. They've been in the field for over a decade and using mobile tools and online tools to help with online fundraising and particularly skilled at event fundraising and kind of some of the new emerging tools available today. I did want to let you know that today's webinar is being recorded and Mobile Cause will send you a link to the recording as well as some useful resources within 24 to 48 hours after the webinar is over via email. If you don't have the email by, let's see, Thursday morning, drop me an email and I'll be happy to forward you a link to the recording. Also at the last minute, we decided to have a little bit of fun and live tweet the event. So if you're on Twitter, use the hashtag, hashtag NPEvents2020. All right, Scott, I'm gonna hand it over to you. You're the expert at Mobile Cause with your colleagues there and go ahead and take over and give the webinar. All right, thanks, Heather. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you really so much for joining us for today's nonprofit Tech for Good and Mobile Cause webinar, using online tools to upload to uplevel your live event. Can't speak today. Your your live fundraising event. I'm Scott Couchman. I'm the training manager here at Mobile Cause. Now, in person fundraising events are an excellent way for nonprofits like yours to meet new donors, generate excitement, and most certainly raise money. Now, with online and mobile donations at an all-time high, it's clearly one of the best and, as you'll hear today, quickest ways to reach your event fundraising goals. Maximizing your online tools and also makes event planning and managing more efficient so you save valuable time, streamline your outreach, and find that donor reporting is a breeze. Now today we will share with you strategies for implementing online tools into every stage of your next fundraising event. We'll also share how one nonprofit put online tools to work and brought new heights of success for their organization. Now, we welcome your participation as we explore the benefits of using online and mobile tools at your fundraising events. So please feel free to ask questions by submitting them into the questions box into your GoToWebinar control panel. We'll answer your questions during the webinar and also at the end when we have an open Q&A session with our experts. And we really hope you enjoy today's webinar. And as uh, Heather mentioned, a quick reminder, we will be sending out the recording and slides to all the registrants afterwards. Now, today's event is presented by MobileCause, and MobileCause understands the everyday challenges nonprofits face, the consistently being confronted with limited resources, yet still expected to expand your impact. You shouldn't have to face these challenges alone, and that's why MobileCause offers more than comprehensive fundraising software. We also provide one-on-one -on -one strategy from dedicated fundraising experts and have the industry's best support team ready to provide assistance 24-7. And Mobile Cause, we're just as committed to your cause as you are, and together we can grow your nonprofit like never before. Now, let me introduce you to our presenters. Uh, Benel Laporte is a leading authority in helping individuals and brands communicate their unique messaging through the power of immersive storytelling and creating experiences that go beyond the ordinary. As CEO and founder of Laporte & Company, Benel specializes in custom event creation and strategic coaching for brands and nonprofit organizations looking to increase their brand visibility and, and multiply their revenue through mission-aligned events. Laporte & Company offers insight into proven event planning and marketing strategies that have propelled nonprofit organizations to surpass their event revenue targets by over 35% in less than one year. Now, Christy Noel is the, the Vice President of Digital Fundraising Services at Mobile Cause, where she is responsible for creating, driving, and delivering programs to help Mobile Cause customers and partners advance their marketing and fundraising campaigns. 
Christy is the former board chair of Girls on the Run of Los Angeles County and marketing director and dog foster for Noah's Bark Dog Rescue. Now, today we have a really informative agenda for you, packed with some um, useful insights, tools, and, and different takeaways. We'll take an in-depth look at how online tools can make giving easy while streamlining your campaign efforts in event strategies to boost excitement and donations, plus post-event tools to, to follow up with your guests in meaningful ways. And then we'll hear from Benel on how Teach for America used these tools to hit their goal in the first three minutes and went on to raise 150% over their goal at their big annual gala. All right, so before we begin discussing using online tools to up-level your live fundraising event, we have a quick poll question for everyone. So let me go ahead and launch the poll here. Uh, is your nonprofit currently using online tools to manage your fundraising events? Yes, somewhat, or no? Let's see what kind of answers we're getting here. Oh, great, a lot of responses here. All right, let's see if we can push that number a little higher. All right, give it another five seconds or so. All right, let's go ahead and close that poll. Let's take a look at that. So um, the, let me get share results here. So um, nice, first off, nice to see uh, those who uh, who have said yes. Always always good to see that. Those who are saying somewhat, great. Hopefully you can uh, get some some uh, additional tips today. And those who are not, well, hey, this is this this is the place for you. So for all all three groups, hopefully you can get something good out of this session, some new tips or uh, just overall uh, new information to uh, to help with your fundraising. So let's go back into our session here. So uh, with that, I want to uh, I want you to join me in welcoming Christy Noel to start us off with the online tools to up level your live fundraising event. Over to you, Christy. Great, thank you, Scott, and thank you, Heather, and uh, welcome everybody. I was excited to see the results of the poll, and that some of you are already using some online tools for your events. And hopefully we'll give you some tips on how to implement those and, and up-level it even, even more. For those of you who are using it somewhat, hopefully we'll introduce you some new tools that you haven't thought of or haven't implemented yet. And those of you who have not, then we've got some great information to share with you and how you can start incorporating into your fundraising events to, to see an increase in revenue and grow your donor database. And this is why online tools and mobile tools are so important for nonprofits. And, and these benefits really go across whether your campaign is a virtual campaign, a day of giving, your everyday giving, or in what we're talking about today, your live events, because they really help you manage your campaign more easily, more efficiently, more effectively. And it's a better user experience for your donors and supporters. It just streamlines everything. It just makes everything a little bit more smooth. And all these tools really help you, at the end of the day, capture new donors, boost your attendance and your registration for your events and your campaigns. They establish new ways of giving and to get people to participate and interact with you in ways that they haven't before. It's easy. Um, who doesn't want easy these days, right? So wherever you are, whenever it is convenient for your donor to buy a ticket, give a donation, they can do it in the middle of the night uh, while they're standing in line somewhere. They don't have to be, you know, tied to anything in particular to make that happen. So just that extra added convenience factor just enables everything to to increase. With automation, because everything's uh, online and digital, you get that for you with the organization. It saves you time and energy. You're not manually sending out tax receipts and uh, you're not manually sending out tickets anymore, thank you letters, all that happens automatically in the back end. So you can focus your time and energy on more important things to, you know, connecting with donors, talking to your major donors, having in-person meetings with sponsors, et cetera. And then it really simplifies reporting and streaming, streamlining your integrations because you can integrate the information to your CRM, you can have it automatically pop populate, you can download reports, you can do analysis 
and really see the ROI and the effectiveness of your campaigns. So these tools are meant to help you do your job more easily, but also more effectively. So let's dive in and start looking at what exactly I mean. So one of the, oh, and I do want to say that um, the, the tools that I'm introducing you to, to you today, I'm not suggesting that you implement every single one of them. Uh, here, when we work with our clients at Mobile Cause, we recommend that the client look at what's going to work for them. So if it feels like it's too much or it's overwhelming or, you know, these are too many new things or too many changes, then I, no, I'm not suggesting like, you know, implement every one of them. We really say that you should, you know, look at it, the ones that feel like it'd be, have the biggest impact, that will have the biggest role in helping you grow your organization and your event, and then utilize those, and then you can continue to build on it from there. But this isn't a, an all or nothing type of situation. So uh, you work with what works best for you. So for pre-event tools, the first one I wanna to talk to you about is an event page. And this is designed to be the central hub for all things related to your event. So it will have your all the information on the date, the time, the location. It will include uh, the ability to link to your tickets, your registrations, or your RSVPs, however you're collecting your guest information. If you have sponsorships and sponsored pa packages or you want to spotlight your sponsors, you can, this would be on your event page. You'll obviously want to include your donation link for anybody who wants to donate prior to the event or won't be coming to the event but still wants to be able to uh, contribute and give. It's a great place to put images and pictures and videos to show the uh, past galas or events or you can and link to the information from there. It gives people the excitement, gives them a, a look into what they're gonna be expecting. And if you have any other information you need to link to, you can put that on the event page. So really, this makes it so easy and to drive everybody to the single event page, yet have all the information they need to find whatever it is they need to interact, whether it's a sponsorship, a, captain, a table captain, the tickets, et cetera. And it makes it super easy when you're promoting it because now you have one link to put in your social media or one URL to put in your direct mail if you have a keyword and a, a short code to be able to have text people to land right on the event page and then one, one link that get to all the other aspects of your event. So instead of saying, here's the link for registration and here's the link for sponsorship, here's the link to donate. You now have just one link that drives everybody to this single event page with all the information that they need. And it's designed to drive conversion. So it's it's designed to help you get more registrations and get more nations. And it is uh, designed to be mobile responsive. So it would, no matter the device that the uh, supporter or your donor is on, this event page will work very beautifully and help them navigate to all the information they need. The other pre-event tool that uh, we want to talk about is the whether it's ticketing, RSVPs, or res registration, because as we know, the key to a successful event is getting people in the door, right? So uh, whether it's for a gala or a golf tournament or a luncheon, the online ticket ordering can capture all of the RCPs, the registration, uh, and makes it easier for you, the org, and again, the attendee, and therefore you're gonna find that your attendance increases. You can have, what's nice about online tools for ticketing is you can have different ticket prices, including free, so you can offer a free ticket and then different um, levels of ticketing or different packages. Uh, maybe with what's included, you can maximize and uh, excuse me, you can have a maximum number of tickets sold by person or by the event. So if you have a venue that can only hold so many people and you know that you you don't want to oversell, you can put in a maximum number of tickets sold and and then you don't have to worry about uh, selling too many tickets once once you've re reached that capacity. If you want to limit the number of tickets that a single person can buy, 
in one purchase, you can do that as well. So if you want to make sure you get uh, a broad audience with uh, without any one particular person buying too many, or if you have certain uh, VIP section down front and there's only so many seats, then that's a way to control that as well. You can also offer discount codes or promotional codes. So if you want to have an early bird incentive for somebody to sign up early or uh, somebody bringing a group of friends can use a promotional code so that uh, to sign up together, things like that. You can also use uh, the registration or RSV, form, or RSV forms or in ticketing to capture special requests or meal requests or t-shirt sizes, et cetera. One great way to utilize online tools is with table captains. So if you're using table captains to sell tickets for your event, they can have their own form that is personalized to them. You can They can track their sales. They can see who's purchased. They can have their own keyword and short code. So they can have a way for their friends and family to text directly and land on their table captain form. If you want to have a multiple table captain competition, you can use that to track who sold their tickets and how many they've sold and, and how, how much revenue they brought in. And all of this becomes less cumbersome because as attendees buy tables and want to provide their table guest information, this can be done directly online. So if somebody bought a table of, and but didn't know who their guests were, but want to tell you who their, their guests are closer to the event, they, they can do this online instead of calling your office and speaking with somebody and having that to be manually uh, updated and then put into an Excel spreadsheet. This is all done online and then is ready for you at guest check-in and automatically updated. And with people are used to buying tickets online. So this is all plays into uh, how people are used to doing it. So you're organization is now selling in tickets is the way that people are doing it these days anyway. Sponsorships, another pre-event tool is if you're selling sponsorships or, or trying to attract sponsorships, you can use that as well online. And it certainly makes it easier for a sponsor to say yes. You can put all the sponsorship information, what their benefits are, what the pricing is. You can put an a number to limit uh, sponsorships. You know, if you only have one gold sponsor available, then as soon as that one's sold, then it's no longer available to anybody else. Uh, one of the things I like about being able to promote your sponsorship packages is once you've sold them, you can then put the logo of who that sponsor is on your website on your event page and link to their website. So it gives an easy and great way to promote your sponsors once they become a sponsor of the event and give them some promotional recognition and awareness. Another free event tool that we love and a lot of our customers use and have found really effective is mobile messaging. And that is talking to your supporters, your donors, your volunteers on the device that they have with them virtually 24 seven, right? Um, so you can use mobile messaging to provide event details and updates. You can send reminders and information about the event. If, Say the weather's changing and it's going to be rainy. You can send a, an update or a text message that says, hey, um, you know, here's the contingency plan or we are going to don't worry, you're not going to get wet. We've, we've got you covered. If at the last minute the main parking lot is full, you can send out a text with here's what to do when you get to the event. Here's where you're going to park. So it's a great way to be in real time communicating and to have people see it because uh, text messages have a very high open rate, somewhere around 98%. So people are going to see your messages. And then it can also be used to communicate with volunteers, tell people where to check in. And then obviously for thank yous and acknowledgements of gifts, of donations, of participation in the event, et cetera.
And then at the event, we are now talking about checking people in. So the online ticketing that you've sold is now very efficient when checking in people to your event because they will automatically get their tickets via email and text. So yay, one less detail that you need to take care of. Uh, and if your guest is more comfortable printing a paper ticket than using their mobile dice, device, they can. So the, the nice thing about this is that this is not forcing everybody to uh, have a mobile device and, and use it. If they're not comfortable, they print out the ticket and they bring it with them and they can still be scanned in uh, through the, the online and digital tools. The ticket confirmation email includes all the event details with a link to add it to the attendees calendar. So that makes it very easy for them to plan and prepare for it and remember your event. And the tickets, whether it's on their phone or their mobile device or are printed, are branded to your organization. So they provide, excuse me, and they provide the event details. So the guest has everything they need to know as long as they have their ticket, including uh, your organization's logo and the, and the branding related to it. So they've now got their ticket via email or text. They come to the venue, they show it on their mobile phone or they, they hand over their printed ticket and now you're ready for one of your volunteers to check them in. And it's a scannable ticket with a QR code so it makes it very efficient to just swipe and let people get in the door so they spend more time in your event and less time in line or in line uh, for a manual paper check-in or uh, standing in line by the last name or the letter of their last name or some of the other ways that events have typically managed the check-in. They also have, you can have multiple devices checking in guests to move things along. So it's not just one uh, person. You can have multiple volunteers and not all check-in staff have to be created equal. So if you have, you can give people the ability to check in guests while others can have administrative access for more actions such as canceling a check-in or canceling a ticket. So uh, depending upon if you have a, a more, for, oh, sorry, <laughs> you can have just a simple check-in or if there's a problem area, you can have people who manage that differently. So depending upon your the volunteers and your comfort level with uh, who your volunteers are, you can you can determine different admin privileges. And at the advent, at the event, or even before, you can manage the event details as they happen. So you can update guest information. You can see the number of ticket orders. You can see how many tickets are left. You can see how much revenue is generated all through the guest check-in. So you'll know where you are at any given moment in the uh, planning of your event. And then on the day of, as you're checking people in, you'll see in real time who's checked in and who hasn't and, and how many tickets are still available. One of the newer features that uh, we have that has been very popular is card on file. And this is a great feature if you have several different ways attendees can be making a payment. So whether they might be buying items, you might have things for sale, you have uh, t-shirts or other higher end things that are for sale. You might also be having text to donate. So they'll be donating and then maybe they're paying for their drinks or, and each time they have to pull out their credit card, uh, this minimizes that or takes that away. And what happens is a guest will register their card when they check in, and then they continue to use it during the event by simply providing a numeric code when they want to buy or donate something. So uh, it makes it much more smooth and easier for them just to put in this uh, code into their phone. And, and we know the credit card number is what it is. So then it just processes it on that same card. So it's a great way to continue to get revenue and donations without uh, any additional steps on the part of the guest. And the event thermometer and donor wall, one of the most popular at event tools that uh, is being used at nonprofit events these days. And that is, and um, actually it was just used at an Oscar uh, post viewing party on Sunday night to great success. So it's, uh, if you're not familiar with the event thermometer and donor wall, uh, it's our text to donate 
and attendees and guests can text in to provide a donation. They text a keyword to a short code, uh, and then their donation, they get directly, direct, go directly to a donation form. And when they put the complete it, or when they've pledged, their name and their donation amount will appear on your donor wall. And your thermometer will increase the closer you get to the goal. And I have been to multiple events where when the event the thermometer is unveiled that there's actual gasps and oohs and ahs in the room when they see how much money is already being uh, has already been donated and how close they are to achieving their goal and it just provides that much more excitement and incent incentive to continue giving to get closer to reaching the goal and it's more than that because there's a lot of cool features so we have um, milestones so if you uh, and you set this up as the organization to whatever, if you want to have 50% of your goal or 75% of your goal, there can be fireworks that a, a, appear on screen. And so thank you, we're 75% of the way, you know, keep giving. Or uh, if you can recognize particular donors at a certain dollar amount, if you want to recognize large donations, the name of the person with a personalized message that you set up can appear and say, thank you, Christy, for your, your gift. You're awesome with a particular image or a logo or something as well. And so again, that all of these tools come and work together to make it really uh, exciting and effective way. But you don't have to use the thermometer. Uh, you don't have to use the goal amount. Some people use it just for the donor wall. And if they don't know what their goal is gonna be or they're not comfortable uh, trying to achieve a goal or, or sharing that, they can just share the names of the donors. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you use the, the event thermometer and the donor wall. And we have seen an increase in giving when this tool is used. Silent auctions, some of you might already be using silent auctions and you might be, have been, uh, been paper managed before. So by using online tools, it really makes it a lot more fun and a lot more effective because bidding on items becomes a lot more fun when you're doing it uh, mobily. And it enables guests to enjoy the party rather than hovering over the silent auction table waiting to be outbid. So you can actually walk away from the silent, silent auction table and you'll get notified on a mobile device if you've been outbid. So that does uh, two things, one of which I've mentioned, it enables the guests to actually enjoy the event more. And two, it actually increases the money raised through a silent auction because uh, people know that they've been outbid right away and then they have the ability to continue to, uh, to bid from their mobile device. And it allows auction participants to be anywhere and participate. So they, they don't even have to be in the room. They can, you can have virtual auctions. And then a few post-event tools that I wanted to talk about, uh, acknowledgement, acknowledgements and follow-ups. So this is great because you can schedule messages. So you don't even have to be doing it real time or even after the event, you, be, you can pre-schedule messages that will go out after the message, uh, excuse me, after the event to remind donors of any unfulfilled pledges so that you increase your pledge fulfillment because they can, they'll can they be receiving text messages um, reminding them to pledge with a link to go directly to the giving form. They will receive automatic email and acknowledgement uh, with a tax receipt. So again, one last thing that you have to, to do manually, this is all taken care of automatically. And you can also send messages of the results of your event. You can send thank yous. You can uh, save the date for next year. You can send text with a link to the videos and the images and continue to talk about your program and what the how the money raised was going to be utilized through your organization by using these uh, by mobile messaging. And then a big one is the reporting and analysis because this is one where we have found our customers have saved significant time and energy because of using these tools, online tools and digital tools for the reporting analysis. In fact, we had one organization said that they saved three months of time 
from all the reconciliation and the data input from their event. It used to take them three months to get all that information into their system. And now it was handled within a few hours after the event. So imagine having three months of staff time back and you can have integration into CRM. So all the new donor information, existing donor information is updated into your CRM. You can have detailed reporting so you know your outcome. You'll be able to calculate your ROI. You'll be able to see how much money was raised and by which method. And this is my personal favorite is if you know, if you're always wondering how do people give, did they give, did they actually give via text or by the website or was it text to donate? And how do I know how many people converted on that? Well, the analytics does dig in that deep. So you can see specifically how many people texted in, how many people gave, how much did they give? How does that compare to the people that went online to give? All of this great information that you can uncover to make your marketing and promotion programs even better and stronger the next time because you're going to know how your donors and your supporters are giving and communicating and viewing your message. So those are some of the tools like that we recommend you put into place to create a better and more successful event. Again, I want to reiterate that you don't have to implement every single one of these, um, although you, we, it certainly makes it easier if you do. But uh, these are some of the tools that are available to you. And now before I turn it over to Benel, I'm going to go back to Scott, but Benel's going to give us some great case study of how some of these tools were used at an event similar to probably one you're planning. Scott? Thank you, Christine, and thank you for all the, the helpful information on online fundraising event tools. Now, everyone, as a quick reminder, if you have any questions, you can submit them into the question box on your control panel as we go along. And so now let's let's turn it over to Benel Laporte of Laporte & Company on how these tools helped uh, Teach for America have a watershed event, reach new donors, and raise more for their cause. Okay, uh, Benel, take it away. Thanks so much, Scott. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here and share with you the strategies I use to produce one of my most successful events and how, with the help of Mobile Cause, we changed the narrative around what was possible at a fundraising event. As an event strategist, I'm always striving to make every event that I produce bigger and better than the one before. Now, to share a bit of background, my event planning and consulting firm, Laporte & Company, actually came about as a result of spending 10 years in the world of not-for-profits and seeing how many organizations struggled pouring hours and months of work into the planning of their events only to yield the same or marginally improved revenue results year over year. I wanted to create a space where I could provide organizations with the strategies and tools to take their fundraising events from barely breaking even to breaking records. After producing successful and incredibly profitable events for several organizations, including Special Olympics and Teach for America, among others, I knew I needed to help more nonprofits thrive. The possibility that successful fundraising events afforded not merely survive the planning of them. And with that, I'd like to share a bit more about one of those success stories. If you don't know much about it, let me share a bit of context about Teach for America. Teach for America works to enlist, develop, and mobilize our nation's most promising future leaders to strengthen the movement for education equity and excellence. The organization has 52 regions across the United States. So fundraising gilas are a typical mechanism that a lot of regional teams employ so they can raise a large amount of money in a short amount of time. For the region I used to be a part of, the Celebration Dinner serves as the largest fundraising event of the year. It's an event that serves to recognize and celebrate the impact and work of teachers, or as they're referred to within the organization, core members, and alumni of the program. The dinner is a staple within the community, and each year it welcomes close to 500 guests, which include corporate and foundation sponsors, 
school leaders, community partners, and public officials, among others. In addition to that, the dinner serves as an opportunity for the region to say thank you and pay homage to the incredible group of donors that have supported the work of the organization year over year. The funds raised at the event directly go to support the recruitment, training, and ongoing professional development of teachers and alumni throughout the region. Now, before I start talking about the event itself, I just want to set the stage for you a little bit. I had recently transitioned into the development role shortly before the event, and I only had a three-month runway to plan the scala from start to finish. You heard that correctly, three months. Sounds incredibly daunting, I know. However, having planned events for years before that, I was fully confident I could pull it off but I didn't just want to do the event the way it had been done for years before. I knew I didn't have much time, but I still wanted to go big. I wanted to reimagine the way our donors, the community, and even the regional team viewed the event. After having been in existence for over 10 years, I knew there was hidden potential for massive revenue growth. I just needed to figure out where it was and how to tap into it. Prior to diving into planning, I actually started by doing research to learn the history of the event. I wanted to better understand the opportunity gaps that existed and where we could potentially improve. I focused on the results from the previous four years, and it became apparent that I needed to solve for three major issues if I wanted to capitalize on the fundraising potential that existed in that room. Let me break these down for you a little bit. The first issue I was solving for was how to engage the younger demographic at our event. In my research, I found that we were literally leaving money on the table by not adequately tapping into the generational diversity that existed within our audience. For context, our audience ranged from millennials all the way to baby boomers, but yet the only giving modality that had ever been employed at the event was a commitment card. A giving tactic that generally appeals to baby boomers but it drastically excludes those from Generation X and Millennials who are just not typically compelled to give in that manner. From the research, I also knew that Millennials wanted to give and they had actually expressed as much. They just didn't feel comfortable giving in the only method that was available to them at the time. For us, the lowest commitment card amount they could opt into was $500, which for teachers, as I'm sure you can imagine, not a feasible entry point. Because of this, I quickly realized we needed to pivot and quick to provide a fresh and exciting new way to engage that sector of the audience so we didn't keep losing money year over year. Now, to be clear, I'm not bashing commitment cards. I didn't want to get rid of them completely because I do recognize their importance and the role that they play at an event because they actually had work. I simply wanted to introduce a new giving modality that would energize the crowd and make the event itself feel new and fresh, while also giving people a different option from which to give. The second issue I needed to solve for was finding an engagement mechanism that would be quick to set up, given my massive time constraints, be incredibly user-friendly, so guests can easily engage with it, it needed to be expedient with payment processing so we could determine a final revenue land and share the update with the board of directors the week after the event. But more importantly, I needed it to be able to integrate with our donor management system, which was Salesforce. Last, I was juggling the planning of this event on multiple platforms, and it was quickly proving not only cumbersome, but wholly inefficient. At the time, we were using Classy for our giving page, Eventbrite for ticketing, and Bizbo for the event website. Now, knowing what I know about events and knowing the way that I needed to manage that event, I needed a single platform that could consolidate everything and serve as a one-stop shop for all things events. Now that you know the background and all the issues that I was solving for, Let's delve into how I found a solution. Given the severe time constraints I was under and not having capacity to individually research all of the different options that were in the market, 
because by this point, you should know, I was four weeks out until we went live. I needed a platform that was not only trustworthy, but one that had a proven track record of success for organizations. But even more important than that, I needed something that could accommodate my event needs in an expedited time frame. That's when I learned about Mobile Cause through a colleague. They had already seen success with the platform in their own region, so I was intrigued by what it could potentially do for our event. Within a few days of this conversation, I participated in a Mobile Cause demo and was immediately sold. Not only was a giving thermometer created for me in real time while I was on the call, but more importantly, the platform addressed every single issue I was solving for. Now that a potential solution had been found, and with the clock continuing to tick, the next step was convincing our board of directors to essentially do the impossible. I needed them to approve the use of a new event technology that had never been tried or tested before in the history of the event. Convincing our board was not an easy task. But the way that I convinced them and got them on board with the idea was by demonstrating the thermometer the way that it had been presented to me on that initial phone call. And by sharing my rationale and the research I had done ahead of time for how this technology had the potential to engage new donors in a way that we'd never done before. After they saw everything fit out, they too were convinced and agreed to move forward with tech pledge on a trial basis for that year's event, with the understanding that the conversation would be revisited pending the event results. Let's dive into how I promoted this new platform ahead of the event. Now that I had to go ahead from the board, the hard work was far from over. Now I actually needed to prove this could work. I had a lot riding on this. Given the short planning runway I had, I wasn't able to fully take advantage of all of the marketing tools available to me that first year. So instead what I did is I capitalized on the areas that would provide the biggest return on investment for the available time I had to promote it. This is what it looked like. We immediately created a mobile friendly and online giving page and promoted those across our social media channel. So it generated interest and excitement ahead of the event. And even better still, this replaced Classy, which instantly provided lists because it was one less platform to manage ahead of the event. Next, we shared news about the new Text to Pledge thermometer for a donor newsletter to drum up support and excitement for why we should attend the event. This was especially helpful for those guests that had traditionally attended the event for years, but for the past few years had actually lapsed. And last, we sent out text messages before the event, sharing our giving code, so guests could donate early and get a glimpse of what they could expect night of. Now, let's move into the strategies I used during the event. Prior to the event date, I knew I had to be intentional about the way I rolled out this new platform from beginning to end. My staff needed to be well-versed and fully confident in their ability to execute and support donors during the event. But I also needed to make it as easy as possible for everyone in the room that night to not only understand the technology, but be able to follow along and engage with it. Now, going back to the generational research I had done, we tailored the event program to address what different generations respond to and are compelled by, specifically when it came to giving. This included retaining the use of commitment cards for long-standing donors who preferred to give through that method, adding text to donate for millennials and newer donors who were compelled by the excitement that a platform generated, but it also meant we took it a step further. We reconceptualized our video format and we created a more interactive and engaging stage component that got the crowd more involved in the lead up to the text to pledge launch so it felt like a great climax in the event once the technology was actually introduced. To ease some of the fears that had been expressed ahead of the event about how this new platform was not inclusive for guests who weren't comfortable with technology, I worked really hard to make the event thermometer essentially foolproof. My mantra was, 
if you don't get it, you can't sell it. And so working one-on-one with our board chair to ensure he was 100% comfortable with the technology in the lead up to the event was absolutely critical. As a person that would launch and introduce this new technology for the very first time in the history of the event, I wanted to mitigate as many sell-ups and potential glitches as possible for him. I chose a giving keyword that was super simple to avoid as many input mistakes as possible while people were texting throughout the evening. We strategically placed young ambassadors that were tech savvy at every table to provide support as necessary during the text to donate component. Older donors who didn't feel comfortable texting simply handed their phones over to an ambassador or support staff and they completed the text pledge on their behalf. We placed step-by-step text to donate instructions on the table and on the screen. No matter where a guest looked, you could easily find directions and follow along. I also worked closely with our AV team to ensure we had ample Wi-Fi in the room so the lack of signal and internet connection didn't deter anyone from giving. One of the most crucial things we did, however, was having our board chair launched the platform by demonstrating how easy it was to use by doing it himself from the stage and walking the audience through it step by step. Seeing his pledge come up on the screen within seconds and making the audience laugh when he told them, I'm not even tech savvy and even I can do this, got the crowd really excited about it and how easy it was to use. For those donors who prefer to stay anonymous with their pledge but still wanted to participate, We emphasized that remaining anonymous was easy to do and shared instructions for how to do that from the stage. We didn't want anyone missing out and not pledging simply because they didn't want to be publicly recognized. Lastly, we planted a few donors in the audience who we knew ahead of time were prepared to give at the dinner and practiced the technology with them ahead of the event, the same way we had done with our board chair. This prepared them to execute night of, so their pledges were the first ones on the donor wall as the first big gift of the evening. This strategy got the ball rolling and immediately prompted the rest of the audience to get going and donating as well. Following the event, we use SlideIL. And SlideIL is a platform that connects your call directly to someone's voicemail, allowing you to skip the conversation, and simply leave your message. It was a game changer. We used this platform to personally call and thank every single attendee within 24 hours, whether they gave the dinner or not. This simple step generated an additional 15% conversion of unfulfilled pledges from the night before. For those attendees that still had unfulfilled pledges after the event, we had scheduled a series of three text message reminders to be set in the days following the event. We had scheduled these ahead of time so it didn't create an additional post-event task our team needed to manage when we were busy wrapping up the dinner. Let's talk about results. The ability to customize the giving amount through text to pledge meant that more donors participated and it created easier entry points for first-time donors. The option to include a short message with your pledge that would show up on the donor wall was a huge hit and created even more excitement in the room, which was really cool to see. Some feedback that we received from guests was that they appreciated the immediacy of fulfilling a pledge because it meant that you didn't need to wait for a check to clear or your credit card to be run. The biggest lift that was created for our team was the ability to have donor acknowledgement letters be automatically sent once the pledge was completed. I set up our platform pre-event to auto-generate letters that included our donation acknowledgement language, and this step alone saved us countless hours of work on the back end. Now for the numbers. The first year using mobile calls led to the highest ever night of giving for the dinner surpassing the record that had been set at the dinner the previous year. We actually hit our goal in three minutes. This had never happened in the history of the event. In fact, we hit our goal so fast that I had to run to the back of the room 
increase the goal amount on the thermometer. So there was room for it to keep creeping up as donations kept coming in. Strategically planting donors at the audience to be the first ones to submit their pledges to the donor wall worked like a charm. It created an atmosphere of immediate social pressure that saw donations quickly go from $250 to $5,000. The second year using mobile cars, we broke yet another fundraising record and went 35% over goal. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, the whole idea to utilize mobile cars was born out of the desire to tap into an underrepresented section of our donor base. As a result of that, we saw a 250% increase in the number of millennials that gave for the first time at our event. Of those millennials that had previously attended the event and donated, we saw an average 180% increase in the size of their gifts. Additionally, we also had higher overall pledge fulfillment. Prior to that, we had struggled with incomplete pledges because commitment cards would be filled out with no payment information. And we realized that this was the result of many in the audience feeling pressured to be writing something on the card when everybody else was, when the app was made. There are so many great things that came as a result of this. And it would quite frankly take hours to go through them all, but let me just share a few more. This technology and the way we were able to implement it at the event helped create a powerful narrative for what was possible and it reinvigorated the excitement of attending the gala, particularly for those guests that had been going for years on end. From a board of directors that was initially hesitant to go with something so new, this platform has now turned into a no-brainer to bring back the event year over year. Something that was a surprise to me was that there are representatives from several local nonprofits in attendance the first year we used text to donate. And after seeing the success of the platform and how it completely changed the tone of our event, they reached out to me to learn more about it and see if the same could be true for their event. In fact, a couple of them even signed up with mobile calls after the fact. The lasting legacy of introducing this platform, however, was that the region's massive success with the platform started a national conversation with their organization, where more and more regions were interested in utilizing it for their local events. This led to the national development team securing a contract with MobileCom so they could provide the platform to as many regions as possible so they too could capitalize on the revenue generated and maximize the impact within their own region. All of this to say, what started out as a risky but hopeful fundraising experiment when I literally had no time, quickly turned into an avenue for quick and massive success for our region and so many others in the organization. By implementing these easy to use online tools, we were able to produce a fundraising event, not only engage our audience in a new way, but it made it so much easier for them to support our cause. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Scott. Hey, thank you, Benel, and thank you both, Christy and Benel, for sharing such valuable expertise with us today. And we really hope everyone here is is inspired to to get planning their next great fundraiser and and start raising more for their organization. Now, before we go ahead and uh, jump into our Q and A, uh, we want to ask a quick question. So let me open up the poll here again. Are you interested in learning more? And uh, would you be interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation with MobileCause? Uh, just more information from MobileCause. And of course, more information from Laporte and Company. So if you want to go ahead and uh, check Mark in there. All right, getting some responses good here. All right. All right, looks like we're slowing down, so I'll go ahead and turn this off here. All right, so um, let's get into some questions and answers. So the the first one is uh, coming from, um, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Siobhan. Uh, 
for Christy. Uh, okay, so as a new nonprofit in the community, how how do you suggest we design an event page when in reality it is the first? Well, congratulations on having your first event. That's exciting. So the event page can still you be used to put the information that you do have. So you're still going to potentially have the location and all of the information related to the, the event, the venue. You're going to have, I assume, some way of either registering, uh, even if it's not a pay ticket so, or RCP, so you know how many people to expect. You'll still want to put your donation and giving page there. And then you can use the other information. If you don't have previous pictures, you can use it to showcase some of your beneficiaries or your program in action. You can use it to tell your story with a video or text. And you can use it to generate excitement, enthusiasm in other ways um, by through what the tools that you do have. And as a small or a new nonprofit, an event page can be used as a microsite as your website. So that's another way it can be used to drive people just to be, become aware of your organization by using it to populate an event page as a microsite with all the information regarding your organization. And all of the promotional benefits still exist as far as a single link to get there, a, a text and a short code and keyword for people to find it as well. Okay, great. All right, uh, next one here is uh, for Benel. Uh, did you have any complaints or concerns from either donors or board members regarding the attendees' ability to text to donate, and and how did you how did you overcome them? Great question. So initially, there was some hesitation about whether or not the technology would be inclusive to all guests in attendance. And so, as I mentioned before, what I did to mitigate those concerns was I walked people through the technology ahead of the event, and we were very strategic and very intentional about how we modeled this, the event, or the day of the event itself. And so, having the instructions on the table, having ambassadors at the tables as well, having the instructions on the screen, reiterating instructions if people seem to be confused in the, in the audience the day of. We just worked really hard to make it as easy as possible for them to understand and not add so much detail that it felt unattainable for them to be able to do it, but more so this is how you walk through it. And so we didn't really get complaints. It was more so concern about whether or not this was something that everybody in attendance would be able to do. And in the event that it wasn't or they didn't feel comfortable, that's where our event ambassadors came in to help provide support at the actual table. Okay, great. All right. Um, let's see. Looks like we only have time for one, maybe two more questions. So uh, uh, this one uh, comes from Kathleen to Christy. How do you convince donors to provide cell numbers for texting? So... Kathleen, uh, the, you don't have to. The Telephone Consumer Protection Act has a provision for nonprofits. So if you have their phone number because you are already working with them as a donor or a supporter or a volunteer, you are able to text those um, supporters, donors, and volunteers messages. So if you have a phone number uh, with mobile cause anyway, we can tell the difference between a landline and a mobile number. So we could take your phone list and determine which ones are mobile numbers and you have permission. And then you can capture phone numbers either through um, requesting it through your newsletters or your website. If you want updates and program updates uh, is one way to continue to build that database of phone numbers, or mobile numbers. And then anytime somebody texts you, whether it's text to donate or a question or text for information, or text to get a link to a video, that number will be captured as well and added to your database so you can continue to grow the number of uh, people that you can use mobile messaging to to communicate with. With that, uh, we will uh, we come to the conclusion of our Q&A. So before we leave, uh, if you're interested in discovering how Mobile Cause can help maximize your fundraising efforts so you can raise more with less time and effort, or if you'd like to schedule a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo to see how Mobile Cause can help grow your nonprofit, please fill out our posts webinar survey. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We enjoyed being with you and Nonprofit Tech for Good to share all these valuable strategies. Thank you, everyone, and have a 
fantastic day.